Why is lotus silk so expensive? Lotus silk is really expensive because it's considered one of the most exclusive and rarest fabrics in the world, produced only in small scale and quantities across Cambodia, Myanmar, and, more recently, Vietnam. Lotus silk is one of the most expensive fabrics in the entire world mainly due to the handling being 100% done manually. This herbal fiber is created from the stem of the lotus flower, with every unmarried strand of silk being extracted from the lotus stem through hand. The silk thread comes from the stem of a lotus flower. Therefore this fiber is 100% animal cruelty free. These rare textiles are woven in Cambodia in workshops whose art dates back more than 5,000 years. This natural fiber is only extracted by a few skilled craftspeople across the world. But making this silk isn't easy. Extracting enough lotus silk for only one scarf can take up two months. And the final product can cost 10 times as much as regular silk. So just how is it made? And what makes it so expensive? Lotus silk history. Lotus flowers are sacred to Hindus and Buddhists. They symbolize the mind, the soul, enlightenment and purification of the body. Mythology has it that the origins of lotus root silk lie in one Myanmar woman's devotion to their faith. Phan Thi Tuan's family of Myanmar has been making silk for generations, growing and harvesting the threads from silkworms themselves to create luxury garments. But making lotus silk is different, which usually comes from silkworms. Since lotus silk comes from flower fiber it doesn't depend on any kind of worm, it is completely handmade. The caterpillars delicately spin threads to create their cocoons, and it can take hundreds of silkworms to make a kilo of silk. But while the insects require careful looking after, they do most of the hard work themselves. The key difference between the bright yellow silk and the paler lotus version is that every single strand of lotus silk must be extracted by hand. Despite Vietnam's vegetation being rich and diversified, reflecting the country's great range of climate, the lotus stands out being considered Vietnam's national flower and a plant that's grown across the country. While this fabric has been made for years in Myanmar, Phan Thi Tuan only started experimenting with this fiber in 2017. Lotus Silk Process Once the lotus stem is selected and picked by hand, the silk inside of the flower can be extracted. One stem contains a minuscule amount of thin, sticky fibers, which must be rolled together and dried also. The threads need to be processed within 24 hours while stem's fiber are wet. In another way, these fibers will break down. The lotus plants are only available to harvest between April and October. Once they've gone through the hard work of extracting these fibers, they're incredibly subtle too. Once dry, these yarns are carefully weighed down and delicately hand reeled. Then yarns are put into the loom. These natural fibers are breakable, but once it becomes woven, it may be as viable as traditional silk. Phan Thi Tuans has a team of 20 workers who creating and make ready these fibers each day, allowing them to produce 10 to 20 scarves per month. But when it is about 25 cm scarf can sell for just over $200, the hard work is completely worth it. The final product is completely different from any other fiber and fabric. It is so soft like silk, breathable like linen, and slightly like vivid. Once the stem is selected and picked by hand, the silk inside can be extracted. Each stem contains a minuscule amount of thin, sticky fibers, which must be rolled together and dried. The silk is then woven by hand on narrow looms and dyed using natural colors derived from native plants. These can range from a dark red to an intense indigo blue, to a soft pale gold. One product resulting from this silk are scarves. The scarves are a completely handmade artisan product, originally born out one woman's devotion and still produced with the same mesmeric attention to detail. Each of the scarves takes at least a week to produce, excluding the harvesting and dyeing. The wholly natural texture weave is further proof of its origins. Unlike traditional silk they are completely vegan-friendly. Lotus silk is truly an ethical, and eco-friendly, luxury item with more than a little soul. Some instructions for lotus silk. If you own a lotus silk scarf you now have to pay attention to some details you normally would. Since the lotus fabric is a different type of fabric it will not need a lot of washing. If you would like to wash their lotus scarf though, you would have to consider the following instructions. Use only a drop of very mild soap. Do not leave your scarf soaking. Do not wring out or twist the scarf. Leave the scarf to dry in a flat position. Avoid direct sunlight when drying. Do not use a tumble dryer. Use an iron-on silk program and iron the scarf when still moist. So we've now covered all the luxurious traits that have made Lotus Silk a popular fabric with tourists searching for rare souvenirs. It's also recently been picked up by international fashion brands searching for new luxury fiber. However, as you have seen, its scale has been limited, as there are still few trained in the making of these silk threads. Despite the work involved, Phan Thi Tuan is hoping that this skill could one day grow to become a larger industry. So that's all about today's topic on silk. Since we've spoken a lot about Vietnam we'll also cover now 5 astounding facts you don't know about Vietnam. 5. Vietnam is the cheapest place in the world to grab a pint. This is thanks to the Vietnamese institution of Bia Hoi. If you're happy to sit on tiny plastic stools crammed into any available space on the busy Vietnamese sidewalks, 
then you'll easily get via Hoi for around 20 cents a glass. They may even be a buy one get one free offer if you visit during happy hour. 4. Vietnam is actually a combination of two words, Viet and Nam. While nobody can put an exact date on when these words came to describe Vietnam, it's well accepted that in ancient Chinese, Viet was used to describe a group of people from outside the country's borders and Nam meant to the south. So in the Chinese language, Vietnam would have meant the people to the south. However, in ancient Vietnamese, Viet is used to refer to fairies and dragons. Scholars believe this is referencing how the Vietnamese people came into being. According to legend, they are descended from dragons and fairies. Even though it's been used for thousands of years, Vietnam only became the official name of the country in 1804, during the Win Dynasty. Today, the two-word variant of Vietnam is used by Vietnamese nationals, neighboring countries and even the UN. It's only in Western writing that we use the single word Vietnam. 3. Vietnam is one of the cheapest countries in the world to get a tailor-made outfit. In the coastal city of Hoi An, you can get a bespoke suit or dress made for well under $100. Hoi An seems an unlikely spot to find more than 500 tailors but the industry arose when the city was a bustling trading port along the Silk Route. With a ton of material being traded on the city's markets, those skilled with a needle and thread saw the opportunity to acquire cheap fabrics and pass those savings on to their customers. The tradition stretches back over 1800 years but tourists have only taken advantage of the cheap wares in the last couple of decades. 2. Sitting at 3,143 meters, Phansipan is Vietnam's tallest mountain. Phansipan is located in Sapa, an area famous for its layered rice terraces and colorful indigenous groups. To get to the region, you can either brave a six-hour bus journey from Hanoi or take the much more comfortable overnight train. The mountain is known as the Roof of Indochina, which from time to time can cause a little confusion as definitions of Indochina vary. The most commonly accepted refers to Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Good job too because if you expanded Indochina out to Thailand and Myanmar, the nickname for Phansipan Mountain would no longer be true. Myanmar has several peaks well over 5,000 meters. In 2016, a 6,292 meter cable car was built to take tourists to the top of the mountain. Prior to this, the only way to reach the top was via a multi-day trek, which easily ranks as one of Southeast Asia's best treks. 1. Among certain niche circles, Vietnam is referred to as the king of cashews. As the world's largest exporter of cashew nuts, Vietnam produces more than 55% of the global supply and makes well over $2 billion a year from the industry. Cashew plants were brought to Vietnam during the 19th century and were originally grown in gardens to provide shade. In 1990, the Vietnamese government spotted the potential of cashew nut production and invested heavily in the industry. It didn't take long for this investment to pay off and by the mid-1990s, Vietnam was the world's largest exporter. That's it for today's video. Thanks for watching it until now. Make sure you comment about what struck you the most. Leave us a like and a sub. Bye.